Hey all, I'm Venus Singh, a health coach at SugarFit. Today we are going to talk about diabetics and pre-diabetics who want to take up running as an activity in their everyday workout routine. Running is becoming one of the most popular sport across the world. For many, it seems to be the starting point of their fitness journey. However, several people are still unaware of the much needed nutrition when it comes to endurance-based activities. Regular practice combined with right nutrition will reap the best benefits. Before insulin was discovered in 1921, exercise was considered a dangerous activity for diabetics and pre-diabetics, usually discouraged due to high risk of metabolic disorders involved. Currently, exercise is not only considered safe, but it is prescribed as a basic treatment for all the conditions and essential for a healthy lifestyle and recommended to specifically diabetics and pre-diabetics. The beneficial effects of regular physical exercise associated with diabetes are numerous, offering improved physical capacity, decreased cardiovascular risk and increased emotional and social well-being. So, what exactly does a diabetic and a pre-diabetic needs to consider while planning a running event. Number one on my list is understanding the importance of right nutrition. Running helps your body break down fat and build muscles. While this happens, your body requires the right nutrition for better performance and recovery. Exercise-induced hypoglycemia is described as one of the main factors limiting physical exercise and causing poor performance in runners with diabetes. However, certain strategies such as supplementing carbohydrate intake can reduce the severity and duration of these episodes, thereby eliminating the fear of ex exercise-induced hypoglycemia. Nutrients that our body needs while running Many a times, due to lack of awareness and absence of proper guidance from a nutrition professional, nutrients such as carbohydrates, proteins and healthy fats take the center stage, while the micronutrients such as vitamins, minerals and antioxidants are severely ignored. Though the requirements of these nutrients are in very little amount, their functions are very important to improve performance and avoid fatigue, dehydration during the event. Let's talk about them in details. The basic nutrient needed is carbohydrate. Carbohydrates ingested in food are the main determinant of the blood glucose levels following the meals. Both the quantity and quality or the kind of carbohydrate is particularly influential in variability of blood glucose levels obtained after the intake. Intake of carbohydrates is necessary as they become the primary source of body fuel. They provide your body energy for physical activities of all the intensities, securing glycogen stores, assuring muscle recovery, proper functioning of the central nervous system, maintaining the blood glucose between the meals. The quality or kind of carbohydrate ingested can cause significant variations in one's response to food increasing or decreasing the rate at which the carbohydrates contained can be digested as well as their ability to raise the blood sugar levels. Certain food-specific factors that can increase the rate at which blood glucose levels rise such as number one is thermal or mechanical processing. Longer cooking times or certain mechanical processes such as milling of the grain into flour can increase the food's absorption rate. Number two is degree of the starch gelatinization. Applying heat in the presence of water initiates the process of starch gelatinization, which facilitates the breakdown of the food by intestinal enzymes during the digestive process, thereby increasing the absorption rate. Mylose and amylopectin ratio of starches. Starches are mainly made up of amylose and amylopectin chains. Amylose forms the helical structures unbranched which are less accessible to the digestive enzymes than the amylopectin chains. Kind of sugar. Fructose has a slower absorption rate than glucose or sucrose. Furthermore, once absorbed by the intestine, it must undergo a series of processes 
by the liver in order to become the glucose therefore fructose rich foods cause blood sugar to increase more slowly than those containing other kinds of sugar such as glucose or even starch in their composition other food components the presence of high amounts of protein fiber or fat in the food can alter the rate of absorption by slowing down the digestive process certain condiments such as vinegar are capable of acidifying food which slows down the digestive process and therefore the absorption of food let's talk about fats fats are a great source of energy for athletes who require more than normal calories per day especially endurance athletes who have increased ability to utilize the fat so if you are a diabetic exercising regularly or having taken up a running activity at regular intervals you must include sources of healthy fats in your diet however high fat and high carbohydrate diet or over indulgence in deep fried foods can lower your performance and can increase the chances of cardiovascular diseases so remember fats must not exceed 30% of the total energy consumption even if you are a trained athlete you can include food items that are healthier sources of fats containing omega 3 and omega 6 fatty acids coming from foods like walnuts pumpkin seeds fresh water fish avocados almonds chia seeds flax seeds and many others proteins you cannot stress this enough animal sources of proteins can be recommended since they have high biological value a measure of the proportion of absorbed protein from a food to a body of a person is called as the biological value of the protein among all the animal sources lean protein is better choice organ meats like liver kidney brain and heart processed meats like sausages salami bacon ham and red meats like mutton pork beef ready to eat marinated meats tend to be very high on cholesterol levels and sodium thus should be consumed in restricted amounts micronutrients adequate intake of micronutrients is particularly essential to health and performance micronutrients act as a catalyst in our body's chemical reactions and aid in digestion absorption and metabolism thereby helping the body to function at an optimal level hydration hydration is extremely important in the regeneration process a hydrated body has proper blood consistency and enables the body to function efficiently a hydrated body aids the growth of muscle tissues and speeds up the recovery of muscles hydration doesn't necessarily mean drinking large amounts of water you can also consume fruits and vegetables salads that are filled with water apart from nutrition and hydration there are certain other important factors that are considered when you plan to take up running regularly the first one could be the duration of exercise so for the first 30 to 60 minutes of moderate or high intensity exercise the muscular and hepatic glycogen becomes the primary muscle fuel thereafter the glycogen stores begin to decrease and muscle increasingly obtains the energy from fatty acids and plasmatic glucose following this is when the most significant changes in the blood glucose levels are observed another important factor could be intensity so glucose is the most preferred muscle fuel for exercise performed at a moderate or high intensity whereas low intensity exercise uses fatty acids as an energy source so low intensity activities such as walking may have minimal effect on the blood sugars whereas high intensity activities such as running could cause a stronger and faster blood glucose lowering effect Another important factor is frequency. Hypoglycemic effects, especially after exercise, increase after several consecutive days of physical exercise. In this situation, since it's virtually impossible to recover of the glycogen stores from one day to another, the body is not able to use the mechanism of hepatic glycogenesis to regulate the blood glucose levels. The next important factor is the schedule of your medication and insulin dosage. So the timetable of insulin administration results in the presence of different blood insulin levels throughout the day, which brings about a greater tendency to develop hypoglycemia during physical activity. 
This effect is more likely when exercise is performed just within 2 to 3 hours after the meals when the rapid acting insulin is the strongest over the body. Therefore, when a diabetic and a pre-diabetic is taking up running, then it should be aligned to the medications that person is consuming or should be discussed with your doctor or your dietitian to understand your schedule of medication versus your schedule of workouts. So, the bottom line here is that you are what you eat. In order to be an efficient runner, you must add the vital ingredients in your everyday dietary plan. From consuming the right amount of carbohydrates to vitamins, proteins, minerals, and not to forget micronutrients, a balanced diet is the key. You have to mindfully plan your runs aligned to your food and medication routine. Thank you very much.